Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make shaped macarons. I've been making macarons now for almost a decade, but I only got into shaped macarons a few years ago. Once I nailed the way that you do the regular macarons, I thought might as well use my piping skills and make shaped ones. But making shaped macarons is kind of a different ball game. And there's a couple reasons why. So what I'm going to be showing you today is how I used the French method to create shaped macarons, and I'm going to show you what happens. Now, I've truthfully only made this recipe a couple of times. I don't really use the French method because I find it a little bit unreliable. I know some pastry chefs can nail it every time, but I myself have not had the best of luck with this. The last time I made these macarons, they did end up with feet, but they weren't as tall as they normally are when I use my own recipe. At this point in the process, I felt like everything was going really well and the meringue fluffed up perfectly and the batter comes together fairly nicely. The consistency that I'm looking for when I'm making shaped macarons is a little bit different than when I'm just piping regular circles. Piping circles just requires you to leave your bag in the same spot and squeeze and then when you let off, you make a quick apostrophe to prevent any more of the batter from coming out. With shaped macarons, especially if I'm going to be layering things, I want it to be a little bit thicker. So normal consistency would probably be more like honey or a thickened pancake batter. Whereas with shaped macarons, I'm looking for something a little bit thicker. So at that point, just before it turns into that honey-like consistency. Right here is one of the reasons that I don't develop feet. And I actually knew this before, so I don't know why I was doing it this way. But you never want to outline your macaron and then fill in. This is not a sugar cookie. I always find when I outline my shaped macarons and then fill in, I never ever get feet. I'm not really sure the science behind that, but that's what always happens to me. I wanted to give this a little bit of a control, so I did make rounded macarons as well to see if maybe those would develop feet. Notice here how I'm not outlining anything. I'm simply squeezing the bag and then just lifting off. And yes, when I watch this footage back, I just keep trying to tell myself in the video, you're wasting your time, those aren't gonna work out. But when your macarons do work out, it's a very triumphant feeling, especially if they've never worked out in the past. There is nothing like looking at your macarons for the first time with feet when they come out of the oven. So first, this happened. Yep zero feet whatsoever. Now, taste-wise, it tasted kind of like a macaron, but it was a little bit off in texture as well. Even my simpler designs didn't turn out, and the top is oddly bumpy for some reason. And I also had a lot of cracking with this recipe as well. This is not to say that this macaron recipe does not work, because I did do a trial once with this, and it did work perfectly fine. However, I just don't think it's as reliable as I would like it to be for myself. So the first thing I'm going to do to fix my macaron problem is use my Italian meringue. That, I think, is going to make all of the difference. So for those of you that don't know what the difference is, the French method requires you to not heat your egg whites whatsoever. All you do is whip your egg whites and you add your sugar little by little. This method requires you to heat sugar and water on a stove and then pour it into whipping egg whites. A lot of people don't like using this method because quite honestly, the French method is a lot faster and it's easier, but it's proven to me that I don't have fantastic results every single time. So I really like the reliability of this type of meringue. What really threw me off last time was that I had really nice texture to my batter and I let it rest for a sufficient amount of time, but it still didn't work out. At this point, the batter quite honestly feels the exact same as the last time, but I am piping things differently. Notice how I'm not making any outline whatsoever. I am just piping straight through. The batter is also nice and thick, so I can layer things easily. Now, I don't like how it's peaking so much at the bottom, so I'm just going to take my little cookie scribe and get rid of those little peaks.
After piping all of these out, I am just going to let them rest for at least an hour. This resting time allows you to get feet on your macarons. When these came out of the oven, I was so thrilled that they actually had pretty tall feet. I think this is some of the tallest feet that I've ever gotten with shaped macarons. I am going a step further and I am airbrushing these with just a little bit of purple airbrush and it has a bit of a sheen to it as well. These are for a little mermaid party so I want to make it look really nice and magical. The rule of thumb I like to follow is making sure that whatever I'm airbrushing is at least a few shades lighter than the airbrush that I'm using. And then I want to make sure to direct all of that airbrushing through those indents so it really adds definition. I am using my brown sugar Italian meringue buttercream. If you want to check out that video, you can go ahead and click in the right hand corner. And I fitted a piping bag with a large star tip. And when I'm piping, I'm making sure to put the majority of that frosting towards the outer edge of the shell, since I want this clamshell to stay a little bit more open. Now, I don't really think clamshells have pearls, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm adding in this little golden pearl to go with the party decor. And I just think it looks so adorable. So all in all, my three biggest tips for you to make sure that your shaped macarons have feet and they are the perfect texture is to one, make sure that you can actually make macarons that are just plain circles. Two, make sure that you opt for a recipe that uses either the Swiss meringue or Italian meringue method. I think these are both surefire ways to make sure that your macarons do get feet. And then finally, make sure that you always, always avoid outlining your macarons first. Just go ahead and pipe them straight on. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of this sweetie fam. Right now I'm uploading daily so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to submit your baking fails and they could be fixed by next Friday. Bye!